Imagine yourself as an ancient Jew. It's more than 500 years before Jesus will be born. You live in exile in the land of Babylon with a vast desert that separates you from your homeland in Jerusalem. And it seems as if it's always been that way. The conditions in which you live are no doubt much better than those who have been left behind in Israel. People who are shell-shocked, destitute because of the ransacking of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple. Despite your humane conditions, though, you are still a prisoner in a foreign land and you are ridiculed and tormented by Babylonians. And your faith is challenged as you consider the notion that the Babylonian gods who had apparently defeated the God of Israel and built a huge empire seem more worthy of your worship than the God of Israel. And even those who cling to their faith wonder why Israel has been punished so severely and if Yahweh will ever again be their God. And then the word of a prophet begins to circulate. And it appears to be good and hopeful news. It promises that every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Every obstacle will be cleared away, it says, that might hinder anyone from their return trek across the desert to their homeland of Israel. If there was ever any doubt that God rules with a mighty arm, its words dispel that doubt. Here is your God, it proclaims, a God who is powerful on one hand, ruling with a strong arm, and on the other hand, a God who is gentle and loving as a shepherd who gathers the lambs and holds them close and who leads the mother sheep with gentleness. These are the words of our first reading from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. They are words of hope and expectation and promise. The words re-describe the world as under new management. And the theme of the text is to prepare yourself. Get ready because hope is on the way. Clear a path and prepare the way for God. Now, Fast forward to a point in history about 40 years following the death of a Galilean peasant rabbi named Jesus, who had been crucified for insurrection. Tensions are currently high in the city of Jerusalem, which is once again under siege, but this time by the Roman Empire. The Jewish citizens are divided. Some see God raising up leaders to push the infidels from the Holy Land, but others think submission to Rome is the more advisable path to peace and security. Everyone is caught between resentments toward the heavy-handed Roman soldiers and fear of the extremist activity of local rebels. But the small sect of followers of the Jesus who was crucified refused to fight on either side. And everyone seems to look at them with suspicion. Roman allies suspect them of continuing the alleged insurrection of their founder. The local rabbis call them heretics because their religious teachings seem to be at odds with the Jewish Torah. And the extremist group of zealot rebels dismiss their founder as ineffective against Roman oppression with all his talk of loving our enemies. And then someone hands you a scroll which has been making the rounds. The title scribbled on it says, The Beginning of the Good News About Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. This gospel text has no interest in dressing up its message with poetry and elegant imagery as the other gospels do. It seems to convey a sense of urgency, wasting no time with a birth narrative of Jesus 
or giving any background of John. The opening words on the scroll are those in this morning's second reading, which abruptly introduces John the baptizer as someone very much like the prophet who more than six centuries earlier had been the voice of comfort to the Jewish people who were in exile. Although the first century Jews were not in exile, they were under foreign occupation. It was as if the Babylonian exile had followed them home. And so according to Mark, John draws on the prophet's words once again, telling the people to prepare themselves for a new day. Prepare the way of God, he cries out to the people. Clear a path for God's way and for a new day of hope. That's the message of this season of Advent. Wait in expectation of a new day, a day of hope, and prepare yourself for it. Clear away any obstacles that keep you from the way of God. Prepare the way of God. Just as the Babylonian exiles long ago were told to clear a path for God, to make a way where there appeared to be no way, and just as John, with his fiery preaching and his unfashionable attire and survivalist diet of honey and locusts, told the crowds to clear away anything that would hinder their lives from the baptism of the Spirit, which was soon to come, we are also called to clear away a path for God in our own lives. The text tells us to make a way for God to come into our lives, to remove the obstacles and impediments, to clear out old resentments and grievances, to cut back the weeds of doubt and greed, not just to make a nice little bed for the newborn baby Jesus, but to open up our lives to God's transforming grace. And as we prepare ourselves, it's probably a good time to consider to what oppressors are we being held captive? What forces are pressing in on us today? Is it financial insecurity and the fear that comes with it? Are bills piling up? Are you maybe just one hospital visit or one automobile breakdown or one emergency plumbing repair away from a financial meltdown? Do the mounting bills and debt rule your life? And if so, what can you do in order to clear a path for God? Or maybe addictions and obsessive behavior are your oppressors. Maybe chemical addictions or excessive gambling or overeating or overspending are holding you captive. You try to convince yourself that they are just your way of blowing off steam or rewarding yourself for a tough week. But if they are affecting your work or family relationships or your relationship with God or faith community, then maybe some clearing needs to take place. Or maybe it's relationships in your life or lack thereof that are holding you captive? Are you so desperately lonely that you find yourself taking risky measures or having irrational thoughts? Do you feel trapped in a relationship that deep down you know is abusive? Are you in search of the perfect partner who will make you feel better about yourself? What needs to be cleaned up in your life in order to experience a better relationship with God this season? What are the obstacles in your life? And what do you need to do in order to clear a path for the coming one? This morning's text may be thousands of years old, but they are still relevant. 
They speak to us today, promising us that our valleys of despair shall be lifted up, our mountains of life challenges will be made low, and the uneven and shaky ground in our daily lives shall become level. But these words of comfort tell us that we cannot wait passively for these things to happen in our lives. We need to prepare ourselves for them. We need to clear away obstacles in our lives that prevent us from experiencing God's grace in all its splendor. This Advent season, may your lives be ones of hope and expectation for a new beginning. And may you find the courage and resources to remove any obstacles that keep you from experiencing that hope in all its fullness. Amen.